After 30 some years, is Oliver Stone's classic Vietnam War movie, Platoon, any good? I rewatched it recently and I definitely have to say, absolutely. Let me review it and analyze it for you to see how you could watch this movie with profit coming up next. <laughs> Platoon is a 1986 movie that got all kinds of awards. It put Oliver Stone on the map as far as a great director in Hollywood and in the United States. It won the Academy Award for Best Picture. And I think this is really a very interesting Vietnam movie as a cinematic memoir done by a Vietnam vet, Oliver Stone himself. I view this movie as less of a realistic work about what it was like for ordinary American grunts in the jungles of Vietnam than it is Oliver Stone's sort of warped and refracted perspective on his service time, you know, 15 years, 20 years after he was actually in Vietnam. So as a memoir, I think this movie, and a cinematic memoir, this movie works wonderfully well. The movie stars Charlie Sheen as Chris, a new grunt who gets off the helicopter at the beginning of the movie. And like Oliver Stone himself or other, you know, naive soldiers, he's never been in Vietnam, he's never been in battle, and he's ready for action. But little does he know what he's going to undergo. There's a great opening scene where he, Chris, the Charlie Sheen character, looks at a war veteran who just gives him a nasty smirk. And it's a great shot, 180 degree flip, because you know this new soldier has no clue what he's gonna go through as you see the contrast between the two soldiers and yet they're both going the same way, I think to the left in the beginning, which is the direction of disaster and Chris is gonna be calm like this, you know, wizened but hardened and terribly, uh, you know, messed up soldier. So Chris enters a platoon who they patrol the jungles near Cambodia in Vietnam, obviously fighting against the Viet Cong in the 1960s. And he's got to deal with, you know, all the hardships of that, whether it's ants or the heat or the sweat or the terrible walking and you know all the water that's around. And there's nothing to do at times. So either they're patrolling the jungle and going to get shot at or they're back at home base. And in this movie, you know, there's a lot of excitement at home base because they have got free access to drugs. So Chris joins the potheads and who are taking both pot and hard drugs. And then the, there's a division in the movie between the drug addicts and the potheads and the hippies and then the guys who are clean and don't do that. And I think that division shows up in the movie all over the place, including between two of the main characters, Sergeant Barnes, played wonderfully by Tom Berenger, who has a nasty scar on his face. You know he's not a good guy, probably because of that scar. But then also Sergeant Elias, played by Willem Dafoe, who's a little bit happier and who is in the pothead camp. These two sergeants are at odds throughout the movie, and the tensions between the two are very important, especially for this you know new recruit type, this new soldier type, who is Chris. We see Sergeant Elias as kindler and gentler. We see Sergeant Barnes as a mean son of a gun. And you know, there's all kinds of other soldiers in this movie. One element here are the black soldiers, the African Americans who are participating in Vietnam. Some people have read this as sort of anti-black movie. I find, you know, for 1986, Oliver Stone's clearly trying to mix the white and black soldiers together, saying they're all in it together. There are clear differences between the two groups, but they're all together in the same platoon, and so they all face the same fears and desires and problems. Uh, but also, you know, I think one of the main ideas in this movie is that Chris is in for it, obviously. He's going deep into the jungle, which is a Rashomon-like jungle, quoting the famous movie by Akira Kurosawa. Uh, I think even the one of the first shots of the jungle, the camera pointing up to the canopy, light diffusing through from the sun, but you can barely see it. That is a Rashomon shot where the forest is a forest of ambiguity, mystery, but also darkness and perhaps loss and violence. And certainly that's what the jungles in this movie are all about. There's a lot of nighttime cinematography in this movie. The darkness, the dampness, you know, contributes to this sort of feel of Chris becoming, you know, perverted or lost all literally, but also metaphorically and spiritually in the jungle. Now here is where I have to spoil things for you if you've not seen the movie. So watch it and then see this video. But as I said, Sergeant Barnes versus Sergeant Elias in this movie comes to a head about 70 to 80 minutes in, in a surprise scene where the two of them are in a jungle and spoiler, one of them shoots the other 
and he should not be shooting his own fellow soldier, Sergeant Barnes killing Sergeant Elias. Well, Chris intuits this or feels that Sergeant Barnes has actually done this, even though he has zero proof, and so he's a gung-ho to actually kill Sergeant Barnes. That leads to a speech where Sergeant Barnes enters the sort of the pothead commune, as it were, and he tells them, I'm reality, I'm a realist, I am, you know, hard-nosed reality punching you in the face. That's what you face. You guys are potheads or dreamers or idealists like Sergeant Elias, but I'm reality on the ground. I just want this shit so to escape from reality. Me, I don't need this shit. I am reality. There's the way it ought to be, and there's the way it is. Now this little speech, I think, tips you off to what this cinematic memoir is sort of about and gives you a great idea of Oliver Stone's overall ideas, his political ideas throughout maybe all of his movies. This clash of idealism, naive idealism, hippie, drug-induced, new age stuff from the 1960s versus, you know, macho man realism. We need to kill people, and if we don't, then we're going to get killed. And, you know, idealism reality is a very obvious, you know, Western philosophical split between, say, Plato and Aristotle, but it shows up in this movie, and for Stone, he's a political idealist. You know, all, th all of his movies sort of wish for something he can't have, some kind of, you know, liberal utopia. In the movie GFK, he wants GFK to be alive so the Vietnam War won't start because he thinks GFK would have stopped the Vietnam War, prevented it. Whether that's true or not doesn't matter. It's an ideal. It's, an, it's his idealism. And yet here in the movie, you get idealism being killed, being shot because reality takes over. What's interesting in the movie, of course, is that that's going to come to a head in the climax of the movie when Chris faces off against Sergeant Barnes. And at one point, I think later on, I think at the end, he actually says, you know, I was birthed of these two men. These two men, Sergeant Barnes and Elias, idealism and realism, were my fathers. So Chris is a man, you know, split in two. And Barnes and Elias sort of represent him being split in these two camps. So there's a great scene at the end, of course, where Chris faces off against Barnes. And there's a question I have, which is, what does this scene mean when Chris does face off against Barnes? You know, the great critic Pauline Kael, I think she misread this movie totally. She said, at, you know, the end of this movie is a revenge pulp fantasy, and Chris is in the right in what he does. I don't think so at all. I don't think you have to read it that way. In fact, I think you could say that Chris becomes Sergeant Barnes. He does exactly what Sergeant Barnes does. That doesn't mean it's just, by the way. It doesn't mean it's fair, just, or right. And so you can see that Chris may be corrupted or perverted by his experiences in Vietnam, by the jungle, and by being under the leadership of Sergeant Barnes because he becomes Sergeant Barnes. I don't think the movie makes any judgments whatsoever about Chris being in the right or wrong there. I also think Pauline Kael is dead wrong. I think she said this movie sensationalizes or romanticizes, you know, being in the jungle of Vietnam. Not at all. In fact, when I say this movie is a cinematic memoir, of course it's going to be nostalgic about being in Vietnam. If that was part of your past or part of your identity, you're going to valorize the soldiers and you're going to be a little bit wistful about that experience no matter how horrible it was. You know, that's what the movie does. So when I think Oliver Stone did this as an ex-Vietnam vet, I think that's perfectly fine. But if somebody were not in Vietnam making this movie, yeah, then I would say this is too nostalgic or romantic. Romanticizes being in the jungle and shooting, you know, the Viet Cong. But of course this is the, his experience and identity and he wants to show what it's like to not only have been a Vietnam veteran in you know the jungles in a platoon, but then to be one after the fact and deal with you know Vietnam as it was in your mind. I personally have known a lot of guys 
who were in Vietnam and they do not talk about their Vietnam experience at all. Why? You know, I can only guess, but this movie gives you some great ideas as to why. If this movie was their experience, would they want to talk about it? I don't think so. Even if this movie is exaggerated or romanticized, you know, I think this movie gives you the feel of what it was like, the perceptions of what it was like for all kinds of different characters, whether it's Barnes or Chris or Elias or the black characters or the other side characters. They're all a little bit different, but they're all you know, perspectives on Vietnam that are legitimate. And so this movie being dedicated at the very end to those who died in Vietnam, uh, the American soldiers who died in Vietnam, I think makes a lot of sense of the rest of the movie because the movie is trying to, you know, honor them and also honor the vets who, you know, in 1986, what were they, they're 40 to 50 years old. Now the Vietnam vets from the United States, at least certainly Vietnam too, 70 years old plus and we're going to lose them at some point in time so to have platoon as a cinematic memoir of what it was like to be there i think is fair and good and and this is just as good as any i've read a lot of vietnam war um, uh, memoirs and book form this is just as good as any of them so that's one of the reasons i deeply appreciate this movie have you seen platoon what do you think about it please leave us a comment i'd love to hear from you and please subscribe to this channel for more great movie content Thank you and have a great day.